Hey, we're back live. Must be three o'clock someplace. At least three o'clock where I am on the uh, on the West Coast. What time is it for you, Jess? Five o'clock. Five o'clock. There you are. Two hours. So you come from a friendly city. Uh, wearing my Twins jersey, go Twins. I have to admit <laughs> that um, when I first uh, flew into Minnesota um, for a business trip, it was weird seeing everybody walk around with jerseys with my last name on it. <laughs> kind of felt just a bit awkward. There yes. were billboards and signs everywhere. I went, wow, this guy must be popular here. People know who he is. They have his jersey. So Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so um, what's happening in the business world for you these days? Um, busy, not busy? Yeah, um, you know, the the virus and everything has affected a lot of people, uh, including some of my clients. Um, however, um, it seems like we're getting a lot more new clients as they're trying to transition uh, to more online uh, marketing. So, Now, have you had clients that were offline and they came to you in a panic saying, help, 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 get me online? Uh, not a ton, but a couple, yes. Yeah. yeah. Most of them had at least a, a, a little bit of a presence, you know, before they came, so... Yeah, I was speaking to one uh, one of my guests, and he um, said that he had a client. They were doing some online stuff with some social, but had refused to do e-commerce, uh -huh. um, and then quickly changed their mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he said, "So nine days later, from the conversation, they were up selling on uh, e-commerce." And I think I've seen a yeah. lot of people kind of get forced into making decisions to get online. Absolutely, yeah. I think uh, there's going to be a lot of changes after uh, after this whole thing's over. So. So from your perspective, what do you think this is going to look like for businesses and like your clients when this is done? I think, you know, just there's going to be a little bit more hesitancy to um, be out for a while, at least. Um, I, you know, I think a lot of people are anxious to get back and, and you know, I think there'll be a, uh, you know, kind of a mass uh, of people coming back. But I think there's going to be a uh, an amount of people that are going to kind of hang back and just kind of see what's happening, you know, try not to go out as much. They're going to do more online shopping. They're going to uh, change their habits. So they're not driving, you know, going to so many destinations, you know, instead of going to five stores, they're going to pick one or two and they're going to pick those. And, and, you know, even if they don't save the 50 cents on uh, cabbage or whatever they're shopping for, uh, they just rather not have to go to another store and uh, prolong the time they're away from their house. Yeah, I'm just wondering, you know, how some of the businesses are going to be able to scale. I mean, obviously, food services, um, they're going to come back with some restrictions in terms of yeah. uh, seating. Um, but I think of all the other personal services that you go to, massage and Cairo and uh, nail techs and everyone who needs a haircut, um, uh, how are they going to manage that? Because, you know, there's some vendors that aren't going to reopen. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the ones that reopen... Um, you know, my question is, are they viewing their, their business moving forward any differently than they were before? Are this going to go back to sc status quo? Hey, go in, book an appointment with the receptionist and come in whenever. But now that whenever might be two months instead of two weeks. Yeah. And, and there really was, a, even before the virus, there was a trend where a lot of mo services were going mobile. People, you know, dog groomers, uh, hairstylists, um, different things that actually just come to you. And, um, you know, it's obviously a little bit more expensive and hopefully they get better tips that way. Um, but that I think that trend is just going to continue and uh, at a much faster clip at this point. Yeah, I'm not sure what it's going to look like. I'm just hoping that um, people are going to be willing to adapt and and not just try to say, hey, I'm going to go back to exactly the way it was and then wonder what happens when, when their business falls off. Right. So what advice are you giving clients right now? Are your clients saying, hey, I want to stay where I'm at um, or I, do I want to, you know, do I want to you know, spend more, more time, more money and, and increase my reach. Yeah. You know, we, we kind of teach, and we were teaching this before, but we, we, I kind of believe in a, in a mult, you know, a, an omnipresent approach, basically getting your company, your name, your brand out pretty much anywhere you can, making sure that you're visible in front of your clients at all times. And so we'll see more of that where people are trying to you know, leverage other people's platforms. I think affiliate marketing type stuff where people are uh, partnering on like email, like on newsletter lists and things like that from are going to be a much higher um, because, uh, you know, a local chiropractor and, a, and a, a lawn company or, or not a chiropractor, but a chiropractor and a massage therapist, for instance, um, 
if they advertise on each other's newsletters, uh, they can increase their reach without, uh, you know, expense uh, you know, and things like that, because uh, they're going to have to keep their expenses lower because they're bringing in a new stream of revenue. Uh, and there's ad costs and face, you know, Facebook costs money and all these different platforms. So um, some some companies are kind of partner, I think, in my opinion, and do some more joint ventures to save money and increase their reach at the same time. Well, I hope that happens. I mean, that makes sense to me. Um, you know, the, the old saying is that uh, the money's in the list. And my comeback to that was, but what if the money's in somebody else's list? <laughs> which is, you know, which is your example that, you know, I'm a chiropractor yeah. and I'm not competing with massage therapy. They're, they're complementary services. Yeah. You might even add in acupuncture and a few others. So there's a way for people to get together and do joint marketing um, to help the overall wellness of the client and also help their business. Yeah. And I think, I, I think you're going to see a lot of uh, mergers. A lot of companies are going to come together to cut expenses. Um, I, that's probably going to change the real estate market, uh, you know, in the, in the commercial space. Um, I don't know. I think there's going to be a lot of changes and we just have to adapt to them as they come. Um, but I do recommend, um, you know, not service business a little tougher, but other businesses, you know, leverage Amazon, you know, get your products on Walmart, get your products on Shopify, get your products on eBay, wherever you can find a fit. Um, you know, you know, you might as well have five, six different income sources instead of just sit, you know, relying on one or two, because if one of them dries up, you're out of luck. So if you have five, six streams, if one dries up, you're still at least have some money coming in. It's funny that you mentioned Amazon because I just had a guest on my podcast that I interviewed her. Her uh, episode will be out next week, and that's what her firm does. So they specialize in uh, pay-per-click for Google and Facebook and Amazon, but Amazon's their big key, and they typically work with brands that are established and have some sales. And I asked her from, for some examples of what it looks like to get on an Amazon store, what difference it makes to the business. And some of the numbers were just staggering um of you know what what's available there so we walked through all the pitfalls and and the ups and the downs of doing that but her point really was the same as yours is don't have all your eggs in one basket yeah. don't only be on amazon because we do know sometimes that um amazon um will compete directly with you so you have a yeah. supplement line and guess what there's a hey buy my amazon brand so yeah. she said be in multiple places so um, same message echoed and i know you haven't heard the podcast yet because it nope. hasn't been live so okay. it's all original all original <laughs> content gotcha yeah no yeah so, go ahead oh i just say you know it's it's just uh you know i call it uh it's kind of like uh insurance for your income you know uh if you have multiple income streams, um, you know, that's why a lot of people, they'll write a book, they'll do an audio book, they'll do, um, you know, some courses, they'll do, you know, some corresponding uh, products or maybe come out with a vitamin line or something if they're a chiropractor. Um, but if you can have different products in different areas um, for coming from different places, um, when something bad happens, you have multiple income sources coming in and it basically kind of protects you against instances like this where where your uh might be where your income might just get cut well and i noticed looking at your profile and your linkedin page uh before we start talking that you're also a best-selling author so congratulations oh thank you <laughs> there's lots of people who have a goal of writing a book and they never they never really get it done i had just uh interviewed a guest i think his episode just dropped uh tuesday um and and he was saying basically their formula is write a book in six weeks um, six to eight weeks. And, yep. and I think when I wrote my book, my first book I wrote, uh, I did a chapter a week. And so, you know, I don't know if that was good or bad. I just set a goal that I thought I could achieve. Um, so now sure. for those people listening that have just a little bit more time that have always wanted to write a book, it's a good time. Um, now time's gone. Now the kids might be depending <laughs> on your kids. The kids might be a bit of an issue sure. getting, getting quiet time. Um, but, uh, it'd be mom, 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 dad, 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 dad. It's like, leave me alone. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And, and a tip for people out there, if they're, you know, a slow typer, like I'm ter I'm, 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 I'm probably, I'm pretty good now. I'm like above average, I guess, maybe by a little bit now. Uh, I used to be terrible, but, um, but I, I put off writing a book for years just because I'd start writing three sentences and then I wouldn't like it. And then I'd delete it. And then I'd start writing and then I'd delete it. And one day I remembered uh, that I bought this dragon naturally speaking software Mm -hmm. uh, at Best Buy one time. And, and I hadn't, and, you know, it sat in a box for three years. And then I, I got it out one night and I said, I'm going to learn this thing. And I spent two hours going through all the tutorials. I went through YouTube's online and I basically memorized all the commands. And that first night I wrote about 5,000 words by just talking. 
Wow. You know, I made a little outline and then I just rambled on. And then if it messed up, I just say, uh, delete the word, you know, hat number 31 or whatever it was. And it would just go boom, boom. And then you just keep going and just keep talking. And it was slick. And then we just cleaned it up at the end. You know, you know, we fixed the, the run on sentences that I tend to do and all that stuff, but that was all in the editing process. So that's why you hire an editor. Yep, exactly. That's what yeah. I did. <laughs> and that's that was similar to the format that I followed. We use that um, freeconferenceline.com. Oh, sure. And uh, basically, once we ag I agreed on kind of the title and the basic outline of the book, this wrote a series of 14 TED Talks. Hmm. Um, just bullet points, got on the phone with an editor, um, went through, and I presented as if I was talking or pitching from the stage, cool. recorded it. And then just sent it out and have it transcribed. And then yep. the editor came in and cleaned it up. So nice. made sure the grammar was right. And like you said, get rid of the run on sentences and and put all the same thoughts, like kind of Sesame Street. These things belong together in on the same pages. So they nice. so they made sense. So yeah, the editing process made me look smarter than I am. So <laughs> same here. Yep. <laughs> Well, and now, you know, the other thing that we we're joking about with a few of my buddies in a mastermind uh, was that, you know, we've got a little extra time or some people have a little extra time is now's the time to take those courses that you and I bought uh, during Black Friday um, and actually open them up and do them. Yes. I've got a few of those myself. <laughs> So um, what's it like uh, in the city right now for you guys? Like, I'm not, I'm not familiar with your industry. I mean, I've been to Target Field um, a bunch of times sure. and obviously the bars and restaurants around, but I'm really not, uh, don't have my finger on the pulse of, you know, kind of what industries are driving your economy. Yeah. Well, there's, um, I'd say medical is really big up here um, between 3M, Medtronic, um, Oh, now we know where the masks are. They're in Minnesota. Maybe you could mail me some. Yes. Yeah, we have a lot here. <laughs> They're just uh, littered across the street. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, so we do have a lot of big medical companies up here. Um, obviously, Target's from up here. Dairy Queen's from up here. Um, oh, you else? know Dairy Queen is there. That's cool. Well, and I, I, yeah. did, I did know one fact is when my cousin got married, he got married in January, which was a really dumb time to get married in Minnesota because I learned that Ford does their cold weather um, um, testing of their vehicles. And it's like, dude, with all the money you've made, why here? We could have flown to Europe anywhere else, but I guess it had something to do with his off season and where his wife was. Uh, but, so I, I do know that it gets very cold there in the winter. It does. Yes. The nice thing is I moved from North Dakota and it's at least 10 degrees warmer all year round. So Oh, really? <laughs> That's funny. I remember saying to my wife after we're out one night, I said, I'm going to, we're staying at the St. Paul hotel. I think that's what it is. That's the old hotel downtown. Yeah. I said, I'm going to go outside and have a cigar. She goes, you're crazy. And I went outside and my pants froze. I went, yeah, I'm coming back inside. It's too, <laughs> it's too cold here. Yeah. Yeah. It does get uh, very cold and windy and blustery and all that stuff. So. So aside from big industry, um, so what type of clients do you typically work with? Is there industries that you focus on or are you across a wide variety? Yeah, we, um, we kind of have two sweet spots. Uh, we do the service organizations, um, you know, be, probably I'd say 1 million to 5 million area is a really good spot for us, uh, as well as the really high end executives with our link, full service LinkedIn services, uh, where we basically we take over their LinkedIn for the most part, uh, help them set up uh, appointments and and uh, grow the brand, grow their company brand, all that stuff on on LinkedIn. So, and that's typically going to be more like executives. Okay, I'm just so, make, I'm making a note. Uh, can I ask you a business question? Is that okay? I'll do my best. Um, have you seen any any weird movements on LinkedIn? I, I know uh, about two weeks ago my LinkedIn account blew up for some reason. I, like I wasn't doing anything different. And all of a sudden, the, the traction and the number of requests coming in just went like off the dial. And I, really? I'd like to say that I, I that it was me being smart, doing something, um, but we didn't do anything different. And it's now <laughs> come back down, but yep. it, it went it went insane, like crazy. Yep. Um, possibly you ended up trending in one of the hashtags. Okay. Um, which will momentarily boost you while you're trending. Uh, sometimes that'll happen. Um, if you've been more consistent, sometimes they reward you a little bit. Um, okay. um, that's probably one of those two, or you just contact just your content, hit the right audience and then kind of got, if you know, if you got enough likes and engagement, um, 
it basically perpetuates. So the more likes you get, the more comments you get, the more it LinkedIn shares it with more people. And then so all of a sudden you have a, you know, something that you shared six months ago that only gets a thousand might maybe get 5,000 or 10,000 now. Okay. So yeah. I didn't mean to, to get, to ask you a bunch of free consulting stuff. I was trying to figure out what oh, the heck because right. no, no. people said to me, I said to people, is, are you seeing this on LinkedIn? Like I'm posting the same amount of content. My assumption was that more people were at home the first few weeks. Could be. And so, I mean, so they were yeah. spending more time online because it, I just, I couldn't figure it out. So, oh, well, yeah. um, some, something magic happened. It wasn't anything that I did intentionally. I just wish I knew what it was. So um, I could do you it. You duplicate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what about your business? Do you think you're going to have to change um, any of the processes that you have um, moving forward um, after this happens? Um, I think. I think I'm going to do a lot more Zoom calls and less in person. Um, that said, it just depends, you know, where the clients are and, and things like that. But um, I had just bought myself that, you know, all you can drink coffee thing at Panera too. And I was all excited to use it and I haven't had a chance to use it other than like the first day. So well, that's not good. Uh, yeah. So, but uh they're, they've been nice enough. They 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 basically uh, gave it to you free for the, for the last two months now. So, um, but uh, no, I I do think uh, you know just getting more used to using Zoom more often um, it makes it easier. And I, it, to me, it doesn't matter where my clients are in my business. Um, yeah. So I have clients in Europe and and um, Australia and here and kind of all over the place. So um, I, you know, it might be easier for me just to sit at home and, you know, and uh, prospect online versus go, going and meeting people for coffee. Cause it takes, you know, the one hour meeting takes two hours by the time you drive there, drive back and all that stuff. And so, yep. um, but it's more of a convenience thing. I don't know that it's necessarily, but uh, the, the virus did allow me to realize how much easier it is to work with not having to leave so many times throughout the day. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've got, um, most of my staff are remote, um, in different countries. Um, yeah. and you know, some clients really want to see you face to face. And I think if, if nothing else, what's happened is this has made people realize that, Hey, we can still get business done effectively and communicate yeah. effectively. We don't have to meet. Like I like meeting. It's great to get together, have a beer, a glass yeah. of wine, um, go do something, go for dinner. But um, this is really, I think, waking people up to guess what? This works. The world didn't yeah. end. Um, my staff are still working. My business is still productive. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I think the biggest is, you know, just the physical retail is really where the the brunt of the pain is going to be. Yeah, I, I, I've been reading a lot of the news because I'm reading the news where my clients are. Um, and I've got a client in the construction business expanding into Dallas mm. and just looking at, you know, the news has not been great about yeah. retail there, obviously with Neiman Marcus closing. Um, and there's a number of other big ones that are that are closing. There's, so yeah, I don't know what the real estate market is going to look like, but obviously retail is going to take a big hit yeah. um, and uh, see if the online world is going to pick that up. I think people are going to still eat and still do all the stuff. So um, uh, they may, may eat in house in their house a little bit more. So the grocery business might take off a little bit in that way. But, uh, but yeah, I, I, I think uh, obviously people are going to still be doing all their shopping and stuff. So they got to have clothes and, and fancy watches occasionally and whatever else they want. So, <laughs> yeah, I think one of the posts I saw was, you know, the first thing that I'm going to go out for is um, a hot chicken wings made at a bar instead of at home. <laughs> so there's definitely some things that uh, yeah. that people are missing. Take out, take out. So, what advice would you give? Um, would you give people at this time that have a small business that are just trying to figure out, um, make heads or tails of what's going on? Excuse me. <clears throat> oh, I coughed. I, I must have it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I, I guess. Um, I think a lot of people are, are going to have trouble kind of um, getting over the pride of ownership a little bit as far as, um, you know, the, this is how we've always done it. And, and you know, I think they're going to fight against that a lot because it's, it, you know, um, when I consult people, that's you're like, oh, we've never done it that way. And, yeah. and, and I understand that. Yeah. And it's, it's, I, I understand it's a struggle to make a change, um, but the world is changing whether we like it or not. And we need to figure out ways to adapt to that. And I think uh, online is, has to be a piece of your puzzle. 
It doesn't have to be the whole thing. You can still do some of your other stuff. Um, but I think you're going to have to get a bigger piece of the pie on online since the offline isn't going to probably work quite as good as it had in the past. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of those things that are, like you said, that are going to change. I've, I've had that conversation with people. Well, we've never done it that way. So I said, well, how's what, you know, the way you're doing it now working? Well, it's not working. Well, why don't we do right. this? Well, we've never done it that way. It's like, well, okay, yeah. you can, we can go in circles here, but at some point you're <laughs> going to have to make uh, make a decision to make a change. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's tough. Well, I think in terms of food services, um, I had a conversation earlier today uh, with someone who works in that space and uh, just talking about what are the changes going to look like there. And the conversation was around security because you have less staff and there's more room and how do you take deliveries for product? Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm I'm assuming there's going to be whole new industries that we don't know that are going to pop up to kind of fill in those blanks. Um, So, you know, in the downturn, there's, you know, obviously businesses that won't open, but on the upside, there's probably going to be businesses that will, that are booming and there'll be new businesses and services that will show up. Yeah. I think they're going to have ice cream trucks with, uh, with the, with, uh, um, you know, Panera built in and a Starbucks and a couple other places and kind of just make the rounds. I, I don't know. <laughs> well, seeing as you're close to Dairy Queen, if you could get Dairy Queen delivery, that'd be great. I that love, would be um, pretty cool. I, peanut yeah. Buster Parfait. Mm, that'd be good. Well, we took my we took my grandson to Disney on Ice, and it was super funny. So, we I phoned up my son and said, "Hey, you know, we'd like to take Elijah out to Disney on Ice." And he went, "Oh, like, are we all going?" He went, "No, just mom and I." Oh, and then my daughter in law phones my wife says, "So, is this for all of us?" No, and then the rest of my kids all piped, and we said, "No, this is just grandma and granddad and Elijah." So we went down, watched Disney on Ice. He had a great time. Uh, fed him a burger on the way down, but because he's a little guy, he gets hungry. He said. You hungry? I'm starving, Granddad. So that's what we did. We hit the Dairy Queen. Said, "Do you think you can eat a big cone?" Oh yeah, I can eat a big cone. <laughs> so that's what happens when grandson stays over at Grandma and Granddad. Oh yeah, that's, we pick up a box of Dilly bars and hit Dairy Queen on the way home. There you go. Yeah, you can't beat a Dilly bar on a on a hot day, especially. So, um, in terms of your um, your training, what sort of training are you guys doing? You said you had a training platform. Um, and is yeah. it all, it's all online, I'm assuming. Yeah, it's all online. Yeah. Yeah. We have, uh, the marketing and networking university and it's, uh, basically a marketplace where we sell other people's courses and, uh, do a revenue share model type thing. Uh, it's all business or marketing related. Um, we did as a kind of a, we have one course that's, uh, I call it like the 52 weeks to business domination course, but it's basically a year long course. And um, we put it on Groupon for, um, we just, just did it recently here, but I put it on Groupon for like 90% off or something just to, you know, let people have access to it um, at a lower price. But, um, um, but that's, uh, it's a great course. It basically teaches you to go from, uh, you know, anywhere you are to have over a million dollar business. It's for small businesses specifically. Um, you know, it's not really for the corporate client, but um um, so we're trying to help out a little bit there. We're probably we're looking at doing some grants um, for that uh, training as well, and maybe some private coaching to go along with it or something. We'll, we're kind of working on the details of the grant, but uh, but hopefully we could help out a few people that uh, normally wouldn't be able to get access to it. So yeah, that's really cool. I, I had a guest on my podcast who I'm trying to remember where he's from. I think he's from Texas. And he has an SEO company. And he basically, ah. the offer he made was, he said, you know, we're fully staffed. We're, we're doing okay. We've got some really big clients. He said, so my offer for this time is if you're an American based company and you're willing to pay it forward, I will give you free SEO services until this is over. Wow. And I thought, man, you know, not everybody can do that. Um, but if we can help somebody, one person that can make a big difference. Nice. That's great. So in terms of community, what are you seeing, um, you know, in your area, in terms of uh, local business groups, business associations, chambers, um, organizations getting together to help the small businesses? Are you, is there anything that uh, you're tracking right now? Um, I know they are doing some of that stuff. I haven't um, really delved into that. I am part of some of the organizations. I know they've been doing a lot of stuff. Um, some of them have like got some food together. I think um, there's a... Um, yeah, I, I've seen some of the emails, but I haven't uh, really jumped on those. So I I don't have a really good uh, answer for you there. But I do know that some of the local chambers are doing some stuff. I, I know they have some online trainings. They're doing some webinars. Um, SCORE is also doing some local webinars here trying to help people. Um, I'm planning on doing a few to myself. Uh, just do some free ones online probably. Um, 
Um, yeah, so there, there's definitely things happening. We got my kids out there doing sidewalk chalk signs for everybody. And Oh, cool. Um, th- th- we've been having fun with that and uh, having different messages out there. And um, did uh, the drive-by birthday thing for a friend the other day, and everybody's <laughs> honking. And, That's neat. Um, you know, so there, there, there's definitely some community support, and people are still going outside front the front yard and waving at each other. You know, you know, you go to your mailbox, and then I'll go back. I'll go to the mailbox ten minutes later just to make sure you know nothing is catchy or whatever. But, um, but it's you know, people are doing what they have to do to survive and trying to be friendly about it for the most part. So. Well, it's funny. We got a, um, a, a note on Facebook from one of our neighbors uh, and she said uh, her kids live right beside them. She goes, my grandson's doing, he's starting a business. So um, I, I'm I'm the, giving you a shameless promotion and I think he's six and he did a video um, on his mom's cell phone and he started a worm farm. Oh, fun. And so he was selling worms and he did the whole video himself and he had all those different pricing models. There was a $1 version up to a $5 version. Oh, fun. And so um, my wife sent him a note, said, okay, Elliot, you know, we'll buy your $5 package of worms. And he came down and put them on the end of the driveway uh, and picked up the, uh, picked up the coin. And nice. there was a hand, handwritten note that said, thank you, put in the dirt right away. Um, but so mom was trying to be creative and, and, and give him something to do during the day other than the, the type oh, of uh, school. That's work nice. doing. So yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's been a, a different time. A friend that, um, she's kind of headed up this whole thing about wearing masks and I think she's made a couple hundred masks. So that's, uh, I know, um, her, she's or- organized a bunch of seamstresses locally to, uh, to make a whole bunch of these things. And, um, so that anyway. It's been, for me, it's been inspiring seeing um, organizations and large companies come together, retool and refit. Um, yeah, and, cool. you know, some of them are, are donating their time and, and whether they do or they get paid, who cares? It's about solving the problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which has been really cool. Yeah. That is very cool. So I don't know when the next time is I'm going to be able to get on a plane. I don't really have anything planned uh, down in uh, Minnesota um, unless there's a baseball game in the future or maybe a hockey game. You never know. It might be a little while. So, yeah. Yeah, I guess the, the, what I'm hearing is the, you know, who knows what the experts, everybody's guessing is that it could be six months after everybody's done before you're going to get on a plane. And I don't don't know what that looks like. I know I already don't like sitting beside someone who's sneezing and coughing when I'm on a plane. That was before there was something that could make me really sick. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be a good time, I guess, to to bump it up to first class if you can. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to see if I pop up the right screen here for you. All right. Hey, that's you. Is that the right guy? That's me. Yeah, there you are. There you are. So if you want to find out what Jess is doing, where he's hanging out, how he's helping people and how he's making you super smart on LinkedIn, um, this is where you find him. Um, I was hoping you would tell me what magic button I pushed, but um, uh, I really don't know. So I'm going to go dig on the dig in the weeds and take a look around, see if I can figure it out and find out what what blew up on my uh, what blew up on my account. Yeah, I, I I don't know the answer. I I didn't see that on my personal account, but I already have fairly good engagement. So yes, you do. Uh, yep. But, well, what uh, was also interesting? I love looking at who we're connected with. So I looked. And when I look up the top there, and one of the guys I see right away is Shane Gibson, who's a guy I know really well in Vancouver. Um, so I know him. I know his dad. I've been to his events. Um, I think uh, we did a fundraiser for him for uh, for the food bank. Um, so it's funny. And here we are kind of opposite ends of the country, uh, different countries. Um, yeah. And we have all these common connections. So um, love the networking. And uh, those of you watching this live really don't know, but um, Jess and I met uh, virtual, uh, on LinkedIn, uh, part of the same group, having a conversation. And so when people say, Hey, social media doesn't work. I say social media doesn't work. If you use it as a broadcast channel, it works if you engage with people and connect with people and not everybody you're going to want to hang out with, but there's no different than we meet face to face. There's a lot of people you meet. So not my people. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. I mean, like I, I think I have close to 23,000 connections now. And, uh, you know, obviously you can't talk to all of them, but you do get to communicate with a lot of those people. But but what I make it a point to physically talk to as many of them as I can, build relationships, build rapport. And I've gotten some amazing friends and got to hang out with best-selling authors and got to, um, my number one referral partner and came through LinkedIn, which I never met her, but now I have met her. And we went, to, I went down to Florida and, and actually had lunch with uh, the lady that runs uh, an, uh, the organization that she's part of. And, but anyway, it's just an amazing platform and you can meet a lot of people. So. 
Well, I did, I'll just share an ex experiment I did. A number of years ago, I was speaking at an event out near LaGuardia. And so I said to my assistant, I said, hey, book me three or four days in the city. I'll get into Manhattan and then go into my LinkedIn and look at all the connections that I have in the, the Manhattan area that are venture capital guys and send them this note. Hey, you know, we're connected on LinkedIn. We haven't talked face to face. Um, I, I work with guys that are looking to raise money. I'm not going to pitch you. Um, I just want to come in and get learn more about your business to see what type of companies you fund. And I ended up with two solid days of appointments from people nice. that were, you know, although we were connected on LinkedIn, we'd never had anything deeper than, hey, we're connected on LinkedIn. Yep. Um, and the common theme was, as I was leaving, was we well, didn't pitch me. It's like, I told you I wasn't going to pitch you. Um, you know, you fund pulp and paper mills. I don't have any clients in that space. Um, even if I did, I wasn't going to pitch you, but it was just a great way to build a network. And I think yeah. people were surprised that when you honor your words, say, Hey, I just want to come meet with you. I'm going to be in the city. Um, yeah. they said, yeah, sure. Come meet with me. And, um, it was, uh, it was great. We made some great connections. Yeah. And it's great too, because now when he meets that guy, that's your ideal client, he's going to send them to you because he knows you personally and enjoyed talking to you thinks you're a great guy and then they're going to send you business too i mean i'm not saying you went there for that purpose but it just happens you know people if you're top of mind when somebody meets the right person and they're like oh hey you'd be good to meet with you know doug and yep. and then that's how the magic happens a lot of times yep it's easy to refer people you know like and trust that's right so much to thanks. Thanks for accepting my invitation. Yeah, thank you for thanks, having me. I thanks appreciate for hanging it. out. Uh, I feel that I was underdressed. I was drinking water and it looked like you were drinking oh, I, I wine. Got, I was. I had a happy hour online, happy hour right before this. So well, there you go. Good for you. But I did wear my twit my or my Viking stuff. It's, there you go. There you go. Super cool. Yeah. At uh, yeah, we had we had so much fun. Just one last story. When we were in St. Paul, we went to a uh, haberdashery that was just up the street from the St. Paul Hotel. And it was probably one of the most fun experiences I've, I've had because I've never experienced a business like that where they had, they sold men's clothing and shoes and hats and cigars and they had a, a barber shop in there. It was the most amazing place. Nice. Um, don't know if it's still there, but um, I had sure. fond, fond memories of hanging around uh, in your fine city. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. If so, you ever come back, make sure you look me up. I will. I know where to find you. You're on LinkedIn. Yes. I, I've, uh, heard that's a, I've heard that's a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> Thanks so much, Jess. All have right. a great have a great rest of the day.